Hey guys, this is Lindsay with Garage Gym Reviews. Today we are going to do something a little different and I'm actually super excited about it. We have Destiny who is a registered dietitian who has agreed to meet with us talk all about protein powders. We are kind of really upping our supplement game and we want to make sure that we are recommending the right products for you guys and that they are tested, that we know what we're talking about. So we are going to have an awesome conversation with Destiny. Destiny, how are you doing? I'm doing so well, thank you so much. Good, do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about what you do? Yes, of course. Uh, so I'm Destiny and I'm a registered dietitian. I'm also a board certified specialist in sports nutrition, which is sort of the premier credential for um, working with athletes in the capacity of nutrition. Um, so you have to be an RD for at least two years to do that and you have to have worked at least a thousand hours with athletes in a nutritional capacity. Uh, so I've done that. And I worked with the Berkeley Athletics Program. Uh, I worked with over 26 sports for four years. And then after that, I sort of graduated to the NBA G League, where I've been the head of sports nutrition for Team McKnight for the last three seasons. Very fulfilling, very fulfilling role that I've had. So. Um, that's where I am now. I want that. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you on. Uh, we're going to continue the conversation, but first make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you can continue to see videos just like this one. Also, after this video, we have placed a link below the like button. If there are any products from this video that you want to go ahead and purchase, use that link. When you use that link, it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. It just helps us continue doing these videos by giving us a small commission. We greatly appreciate it when you do that. So Destiny, I want to kind of jump in and ask you just a couple questions about protein powders in general, not necessarily a specific protein powder. So first kind of question I want to go over, um, why is third party testing important when it comes to something like a protein powder? Oh my gosh, third party testing is is critical. I always have my eyes run new supplements are trying to try by these so I can make sure that they're third party tested. And it's important for two reasons. One, athletes who get regularly drug tested um, may be accidentally consuming supplements that are adulterated with what would be considered banned substances. And supplement companies can be a little bit tricky and banned substances may be under a different name, so athletes wouldn't even know what to look for. So it's just so much easier for them to look for third-party tested supplements, yeah. which means they tested by a third party, another lab that's not affiliated with the company that has been able to say this supplement is good, it's potent, it's pure, it has everything in it that the ingredients label says that it does, but most importantly, it doesn't contain any banned substances. Yeah, that's actually really good. I know for anybody looking to be really involved in fitness, really take care of their body, making sure, you know, supplements are tricky and there are so many available that a lot of the times it can be overwhelming and we're not necessarily sure like which one is good, which one is bad. So definitely look for a third party tested protein when you're looking. Awesome. Okay. So in your mind, what makes a protein powder good? So what makes a protein powder good to me, um, most importantly, is the amount of protein. Mm -hmm. Uh, normally, I would recommend at least 28 grams of protein per serving. Uh, and secondly, the source of the protein. There's a lot of different protein powders out there with different sources. Some of them contain all the amino acids that we need to meet our goals. Some of them don't. Um, so I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that whey is the only good type of protein, uh, but it's definitely the premier all-purpose sort of sure. type of protein to look for that you know is going to cover most fitness goals. Okay. And you're talking about amino acids. So are all protein powders created equal, meaning like I know that we have essential amino acids that we need in our body. Do all protein powders contain those essential amino acids or is that something that we can look for on a label or like how do we know that? Sometimes it's on the label, sometimes it's not. Again, since the FDA that doesn't regulate supplements, they can put whatever they want on the label and it usually doesn't help information you need. But um, one reason I always recommend whey is we know that has all the essential amino acids and having those are important because certain of them are responsible for turning on muscle building. Sure. And muscle. Right. Uh, so if you're looking to build muscle, you really want those essential amino acids and whey is a good source to get that from. Oh, and, and usually um, I would say things like whey, pea protein or a blend of pea and brown rice protein have an amino acid profile that's 
similar to whey or studies have shown can stimulate muscle growth in the same way, but other plant sources like just brown rice protein or hemp aren't exactly gonna cut it. Sure, no, that's really good. I know a lot of people probably are looking for a vegan protein powder. Not everybody wants to do animal byproducts. So having a pea blend with a brown white rice blend is a good one to look for. Okay, yeah. as adults, how much protein should we be consuming? I So I personally, um, I know that there's like tons of information and tons of, you know, thoughts on it. Um, I have read that one gram per pound of desired body weight is a good starting point. What are your thoughts on that? The RDA for protein, I think, is entirely way too low for American adults. We need to get that way higher, sure. promoted a carb-based diet. But I would say that you hit the nail on the head. Normally, even one gram of current body weight um, right. of protein is perfect for for most fitness goals, whether you're trying to gain muscle or you're just trying to maintain. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, I would recommend even more than that. Okay. 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 That's so good. So what is like a good macro profile for you when you're looking at a protein powder or does that really depend on somebody's goals? So let's say somebody's really trying to bulk. Are they looking for a more carb and like fat content in that? you're trying to cut or you're looking for a lower carbon fat content or if you're just trying to maintain what is a good macro profile very simple answer to that if you're trying to gain you want a two to one ratio of carb to protein okay. in your protein powder if you're trying to lose weight you want as little carbon fat in that protein powder as possible because really what we're just wanting is the protein we want to cut out any extra calories if we're trying to be in a deficit sure awesome okay so this is such good information and really like i have a love for protein in general so i feel like i could talk to you all day just about the specifics of protein and what that does for your body but let's kind of talk about some specific um proteins that we have kind of picked out that we have looked over so i kind of want to talk about a couple of the things that as we are testing these, as we are looking at the proteins, what questions we were asking ourselves. So, you know, one is like, what is the protein do dosage? Is it third party tested? What is the taste? What is the solubility in that? The flavoring options. And then also obviously like the price per serving. So going through those lists, these are the questions that we asked ourselves when we were looking at these specific proteins. Is there any other questions that you would recommend asking somebody who's looking at a specific protein aside from those questions? Um, yeah, also look at what other additional ingredients are in the protein powder okay. besides the, uh, the protein source. Is there maybe one or two off the top of your head that you would say, if it has this, I would avoid? that protein powder if it is not a weight gain protein powder and it's got maltodextrin like in the first three or four ingredients i would say be aware okay is there any on the opposite side that you would say like hey this is actually a really good ingredient to have in that protein powder yeah if there's any additional synergistic like ingredients that would help with anabolism like creatine or these baas or anything like that um, I would say that that's a wonderful addition to your protein powder. Awesome. I love that. Okay. So the first one that we picked for our best overall protein powder, and that's the Transparent Labs 100% Grass-Fed Whey Protein Isolate. That's like a lot of words <laughs> for a name. <laughs> I had to read off the script because I was like, I'm not getting this on the first try. Um, okay, so my first question is what is, and you kind of went over this a little bit, but why is this good? What is not good about whey? I'm assuming from your previous answer, you're all in on whey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, why does grass fed protein matter? Um, grass fed protein, it's or does it? it? It might not, it might not matter. Honestly, I wrote an entire article on my blog about this. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, it, it, it tends to taste better anecdotally that's what i hear from people is that it tastes better but at the end of the day grass-fed beef is important because usually the fat to protein profile is a little healthier but whenever we're buying protein we're paying for protein we're not paying for fat so the, the grass-fed part of it doesn't really translate into the dairy of the cow necessarily okay so okay. that's that's all I can say about it. All right. That. No, that's great. And then have you looked at the macro profile of the transparent labs at all? Not recently, but I'm very familiar with transparent labs. Okay. Uh, overall, can you give kind of just like your opinion about the transparent labs 
brand? Is that a good one to look at for people? I love Transparent Labs. It's something that's only recently come on my profile, but I love how transparent they are sure. about yeah. things and their lab testing and every single ingredient that they have in their supplement, there's a reason for it. And they cite the research to justify their formulations on their website is something that I really appreciate the supplement industry that comes in short supply. So we are on track. We are okay to say that that is a good overall protein. Oh, 100%. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, so the next one that we have is the best natural protein powder, and that is Legion Whey. I've tested a couple of pre-workouts by Legion, and I would say that the flavoring on them is like top notch. I have not tested out the protein yet. We're actually getting ready to do that right after this call. I have not tested that specific tasting one yet, so I'm kind of curious about it. But what is good and then maybe not so good about the Legion Whey protein? I'm going to tell you right now, Lindsay, if I showed you my pantry right now, all I have is Legion Whey. Okay, well, I just tried the uh, Pina Colada um, pre-workout protein or uh, a pre-workout. And I'm not joking you when I said I was like an evangelist. I went around and I said, y'all need to try this. I, I feel like I'm on the beach. Like it was so good. So I'm kind of excited to test a little bit more about the Legion brand. Yes. I mean, in addition to the really fun flavors they have, I'm not going to go off on that. Um, I'm obsessed currently with their Fruit Loops flavor okay. right now. Um, but the thing that I really like about Legion is I think that they also use grass fed whey. So the flavor, it's like night and day from any other whey protein I've had. It's super super creamy, but they also do not use any artificial sweeteners or ingredients yeah. in their Cute. Uh, which I think also translates into the quality of the taste. And it's also just high quality way that, that they use. Um, and I, I've been able to see the results of it very clearly compared to other protein products. So I, tried. I know that Legion has BCAAs in a lot of their protein. What's the benefit of having that? Again, not super necessary unless you have very, very high protein needs mm -hmm. and eat some extra BCAAs. Let's say if you have a high nitrogen turnover for whatever reason, you train very intensely. Sure. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have some extra BCAAs in there. Okay. So if that comes in with your protein powder, I wouldn't be bad at it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So you, you're a fan of Legion. We're good on that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. Okay. So, uh, next we have our best low carb protein powder. That is the Jacked Factory Authentic Way. What are your thoughts on, um, a low carb protein? I love low carb protein powders for cutting. Okay. Cut it's anybody here that's listening to this, you know, that when you're cutting, you got to have those macro macros sure on point and, yeah and so if, there, if there's anything that you're just trying to get protein powder because you're trying to hit your protein numbers and there's some extra carbs in there you don't want to use your carbs on that you want to use your carbs on having some toast in the morning sure <laughs> so, and so like in the in that context or if you're on a low carb diet low carb protein powders can come in pretty clutch okay okay so on this it says that it contains isolate and concentrate what are those and why does it matter? Very good question. So isolate uh, refers to just the way that the whey was processed. So they isolated most of the lactose, carbs, milk, sugar from the actual dairy product, just so that you could get that high quality protein. Sure, so okay. I, so it's almost uh, like a filtering system to get the best quality protein. Exactly. Okay. So because of that, that's about 96% protein. When it comes to whey protein concentrate, um, it, it's not as filtered, it's not as isolated. So you could get anywhere between 50 to 90% actual protein sure. uh, whenever you're looking at a concentrate. So if you're looking at a protein supplement, it just says concentrate, but there's no isolate in there. I would be a little wary about how much protein you're actually getting. Sure. So the fact that it has both is good or there are protein powders that just say isolate on it. Yes, okay. those are great. Okay. So next is our best whey, and it's the Onnit grass-fed whey protein. I feel like we've kind of really discussed grass-fed and what that means. Um, is there any specific thoughts about why this formula is good or not good? Um, and that is whey isolate. Are there any other ingredients in that I should know about? So um, it's all it says is that it does include probiotics and digestive enzymes which I am kind of on the fence about when it's included with protein. Should I be on the fence about that? I don't know. Well, it depends on the digestive enzymes. If there are things in there like um, proteases or lactases, those are really, really good for people that 
um, have a tra- have trouble digesting whey protein. I know there are some people okay. that take out of necessity, but it doesn't really agree with them. So sure. they would want to look for something like that. that That's can- so good. Okay, can you just say that what what to look for if you're having trouble digesting whey? Because I know a ton of people have stopped taking whey because it's kind of upset their stomach. They've had trouble digesting it, and they've moved to maybe more of like a plant based protein. But really, we're saying whey is kind of like king in a way. So what are the things that they need to look for? And that is the, what sort of digestive enzymes again? So the sort of digestive enzymes you want to look for in a whey protein supplement are things that say proteases or lactases on the okay. ingredients table, because those are the enzymes specifically that break down milk sugar and certain proteins. Okay. That may cause some digestive upset if you have those sorts of issues. I love that. That is something I didn't know. And I am so excited to learn that. Um, Okay, another question about the onyx grass said is, it says that the cows are sourced from New Zealand. Is this something we care about? Does it matter? Are cows in New Zealand like superior? You know what, if you're a New Zealand cow fan, sure, for Sure, or just like a New Zealand, like they have the coolest accent. So like, I don't know, it might be cool. There you go. Okay, (laughs) okay. All right, so we're uh, trying to move through this quick. We've got a couple more, but we gave the X-Works Grow the best tasting protein powder. Now, personally, I've tasted some others that I think kind of knocks us out, but as a collective here at GGR, that kind of got voted as the top. Um, Let's see here. It says that it has a microfiltration process. What does that mean? Well, most whey isolate powders have a microfiltration process, which is what I was talking about before when they're trying to get all of the milk fat, lactose, and and all that just so you're isolated to the protein. Um, But if it does advertise as a microfiltration process, it may be some sort of special process that makes it taste better. That's why you guys love it so much at GG. Um, And having a great tasting protein powder is important because that's something you're every day, probably multiple times a day. Right. You want to be incentivized to take it. Right. Um, so this says that it is easily digestible. So I'm assuming that if we look at the ingredients, there are things that we would look for with the digestive enzymes that we were talking about earlier that would, you know, it basically it's saying it is easily digestible and we kind of talked about what things to look for in that case is a with that, if it just as easily digestible, is that something we can trust? Or are there those specific words that you mentioned earlier that I'm not going to remember the name of until I go back to rewatch this video that we should really look for? I would be careful with that. If okay. it says easily digestible, to be technical, most whey isolate powders are easily digestible because they're isolated and then they digest very, very quickly. That's just the nature of way isolate. That's what's great about them. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it's easier to digest than any other way isolate powder because most isolate powders are easily digestible. So I think that they were just sort of patting themselves on the sure, f- for Sure, okay. So sometimes <laughs> protein or companies uh, use words for marketing purposes and maybe it doesn't fully encompass all the you know, what we're looking for necessarily. We really kind of get need to get into the details of what is exactly on that ingredient list. Right. You want to dive in yourself and do some investigating. Okay. All right. So next we have the Ritual Essential Protein, and this is 18 plus, which I'm actually curious why a protein powder would say needs to be 18 plus in order to take, but it is voted our best plant-based protein powder. So it does have pea protein, but it doesn't have any rice protein. So I'm okay. learning that maybe maybe we do, we do need the rice uh, protein in it as well. So there is research that has been showing that um, when tested against each other, whey and pea protein, that similar anabolic properties were found, uh, which is fine if you're looking for muscle gain. But if you're really looking to get a full amino acid sure. profile for other performance purposes, you might want to find one that has some rice in there if you're a vegan. Okay. And is there any thought in, do you have any idea like why a protein powder would say 18 plus without looking at the like full ingredient list? I have never heard of that before. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to kind of dive into this a little bit and maybe email you some specific questions about this that we can update the viewers on later on because it's, it's interesting. It says, um, okay, it has L-methylene. Am I saying that correctly? And choline, 
add any of those ingredients, what are those ingredients and what do they do? L-methylene, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think there may be a stimulant, okay. um, but choline is an ingredient um, that is in eggs. Okay. Um, it's sort of like an antioxidant that helps with eye health and, and everything like that. Uh, there's some research that says that it may help with athletic performance, but that's very much in its infancy. Okay, okay, awesome. Um, it also has monk fruit. What does monk fruit do? And I see yeah. monk fruit a lot with in vegan ingredients. Yeah, um, so monk fruit is a sweetener, um, but it's a natural sweetener. So think of it as something like a stevia. It's basically an extract from a fruit. Um, it's a non-caloric sweetener, so you can add it to your coffee without adding any extra calories. So it's not like sugar. And you'll find it in a lot of vegan products because a lot of people that will go for vegan products probably don't want added sugars or refined sweeteners. So monk fruit is a great way to- A good source for that. Okay, so that is awesome information. Now we are running out of time, but there is a ton of information on our website. If anybody is interested, we have a couple more like recommendations for uh, best collagen protein powder, best budget protein powder, best high protein powder if you guys have more questions or you want to see more things like best high protein uh, best budget protein we do have a full list on our website that you can do but nathan actually our cameraman he's amazing has a question and i'm really curious about this because i think it's a good question so intermittent fasting is something that we hear a lot of a lot of people do a lot of health professionals do recommend intermittent fasting if you are to get an adequate amount of protein, so that one gram per uh, pound of body weight, and you're only eating, you know, maybe eight hours a day, you know, two meals plus some snacks, how are you able to get that amount of protein and how much of it should come from like a whole food source versus a supplementation? You know what? I actually get asked this question a lot, um, but I have the perfect answer for it. Okay, right. you know. <laughs> okay good. <laughs> uh, so, so really, the way that you meet that protein goal is through protein powder. This is the time where I would tell an athlete who wants to intermittent fast, get a really good high quality protein powder that's low in fat and carb, again, so they can use those macros for whole foods, but it's high in protein. Even ideally something as high as like 40 grams um, per scoop, something that's really high protein so that they don't have to take as many scoops to meet those protein goals. Now, that being said, you do want to focus on food first. I always say food first, fill in the gaps with protein powder. So I wouldn't recommend you having more than three servings of protein powder a day, and then you should get the rest for food. You definitely shouldn't be getting more than half of your daily protein needs from, from supplementation. Okay, awesome. That's such good information. Destiny, I can't like say enough thank you for being on here doing us with this we hope to have you again on soon i know we're going to be talking about pre-workouts and creatine and all greens powders in the future so we'd love to have you back on thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me awesome guys this has been Lindsay with brash reviews we'll see you back here next time peace <laughs>